Okay, hello, it's Phoebe, and welcome to the 10,000 subscribers special. Yeah! Alrighty, so months ago I asked you guys for questions because I was going to do a Q&A video. And I never did the Q&A video, but we're doing it now. That will be the 10,000 subscribers special. So let us jump into the questions. I went back and looked at that post where you guys uh, <laughs> gave me your questions, and so I got most of those and a couple others that I've seen um, throughout the months. It's only been like a year since this channel blew up. I am kind of amazed at how far we've gotten. And if we've gotten this far in one year, like, how far do you think we'll be this time next year? I don't know, but it's exciting to think about. When I get to 100,000 subscribers, YouTube sends me a little plaque, I think. So that's cool. If we could get to 100,000 subscribers, I'd put it right here on my wall. How neat would that look? Okay, let's get into the questions. What inspired me to play the banjo? I found a banjo in my attic one day, and like as soon as I strummed it, something deep inside of me awoke and said, I must have more of this instrument. And I was kind of in between teachers. I had done piano for a while, and then I did violin for a while, and we were in between teachers, and so I said, can I have banjo lessons as well as violin lessons? And my parents were like, Sure. I mean, yeah, if we can find a teacher, and we did. And what a teacher we found. I'll get to that in a second. But yeah, that's how my banjo journey began. The banjo we found in the attic, I still have it. It's not a very good banjo, but it was good enough to spark within me the joy and desire to play the banjo. So, you know, even a bad banjo is better than no banjo at all. That's what I always say. I don't always say that. I only just now said that, but... <laughs> Next question, how long have I played the banjo and how did I learn it? So once I decided I wanted banjo lessons, we found a private teacher and I've been doing lessons ever since. So I think about five years straight, I've been doing banjo and banjo lessons. I learn mostly by ear and by observation. My teacher will like play a song slowly. I'll take a video of it. I'll go home and learn it, come back, we'll finesse it. Um, We've been working towards learning songs directly from source materials. So it's not me learning directly from him, but I'll go and learn a song from like a Spotify recording and then I'll come back and play for him what I picked out and we'll finesse it from there. Uh, but yeah, I, <laughs> I technically can read music. It takes me a long time though. I'm pretty good at picking things up by ear and that works well with folk music because that's how things are passed down. So yeah, I learn by ear. Next question, what made me choose Clawhammer over Bluegrass? The short answer is my incredible teacher, Mr. Phil, only plays claw hammer, and so that is what I learned. Uh, and looking back, I wouldn't have it any other way. I love claw hammer. Um, for those who may not be deeply engrossed in the banjo world, claw hammer is where you play with your hand like a claw, and you kind of bounce your thumb off the top string like a little trampoline. Um, like so. <laughs> So it's a bum ditty. Um, whereas bluegrass style, you have finger picks on these three fingers, and you plant your fingers here, and you do rolls like you do. But you go really fast, and it's really loud. It's a whole different thing. Um, eventually, I'll learn some of that, but I really love claw hammer. I think it has a more nuanced sound, and it's very versatile because you can essentially accompany yourself. Um, and yeah, claw hammer is awesome. Do I play any other instruments? Kind of. I took piano lessons, then I took classical violin lessons, then I took fiddle lessons, then I focused in on banjo, and I haven't really played around with other instruments since I focused in on banjo. I want to relearn some fiddle, though. Um, I also play a little bit of ukulele and a tiny, tiny bit of accordion. And of course, I play the whisk when Lily is not around to play the whisk with me. I love this thing. Next question, where do I get my hats? I do have a lot of hats. Um, this one I got 
at a Western wear store in Missouri, I believe. Um, this one is probably the one I wear most often, and it's definitely my favorite. I got this at an antique store. It's, like, perfectly sized to my head. Um, but, yeah, I get my hats all over the place. This is my most recent acquisition. I made it myself. It's like a slightly wider brimmed bucket hat made of denim. Next question. Who are my favorite banjo players? Allison DeGroot, Bruce Molsky, Tommy Jarrell, Fred Cockrum. Who else? I made a list. Those are my main ones. And those are ones that I've like learned from directly. Like who I've listened to their recordings and learned my songs directly from. But there's, there's too many good players to name. It's... So many great people out there, but those are my main ones. Next question. Do I listen to any music besides banjo music? Yes, indeed I do. I actually didn't listen to much banjo music before I started playing. I lived a very sad life before the banjo. Um, but I listened to some classic rock, 50s party music. I don't know how this happened, but I went through a phase where all I listened to was like doo-wop and 50s party songs. So now I know a lot of those. Uh, show tunes. I'll dabble in whatever my friends are listening to just to kind of get the vibe, see where they're enjoying. I usually have the country station on in my truck. But yeah, essentially if something gets stuck in my head, I'll listen to it until it's not stuck in my head anymore. So it can range from genre to genre depending on what gets stuck in my head. And my favorite singer and probably artist in general of all time is Sam Cooke. He has got the best voice. I am a great fan. I don't know how I happened upon him or how it came to be that he is my favorite singer ever, but he is. The first uh, music that I bought with my own money was his live album. I got it on my little iPod and listened to it all the time. Phenomenal singer. Favorite singer ever. Next question. What make and model is your banjo? Um, I have a few banjos now, which is kind of insane, because for the longest time, I just had this guy. So let me introduce you to my banjos. This is Bertie. He is an Ohm brand banjo. Um, he is the the Oot model, the U-T-E. I believe it was like a student model. So it's like a quality banjo, but at a more affor affordable price. Then we have Bartholomew, who is also an Ohm banjo, but I believe he's the Jubilee model. He's got this beautiful scroll head. Um, also open back. <laughs> Um, bigger drum head, fuller sound, but he's like Bertie's older rich cousin or something. <laughs> then we've got Buzzy. Um, this is kind of my experimental banjo. I put lights in him, so that's fun. This is the one I turned into an electric banjo for a little bit. He's got a resonator on him, but it's removable. Um, this was the banjo that was sent to me for free by Van Goa. Um, a decently solid banjo. <laughs> A little bit out of tune right now, but that is fixable. <laughs> but yeah, this is a Van Gogh brand banjo, just kind of like their starter kit model, I think. Not like the highest range banjo, but perfectly decent, good for learning on. And I got it sent to me for free, which is incredible. And of course, we have Bixby, my hexagon fretless banjo. Um, a couple of you in the comments of a video about him said he was a kit sold as a kit banjo from the something dulcimer company. Yeah, he's a fretless wood top hexagon banjo fretless so I can go all sorts of cool stuff. Still trying to figure out how to play that correctly, but he's lightweight. Just love him so much. Next question. Some people have asked about like my eye for aesthetics um, and the way I set up my shots and the interesting things I get in the background. And that is thanks in the most part to the fact that I live in a shed full of really cool stuff. I live in a little double-decker shed behind my parents' house with electricity. Um, and it's a very posh, deluxe shed that I live in. Um, and essentially, it's nearly impossible to set up a frame for filming that doesn't have something interesting in the background because the shed is full of little trinkets and treasures that I have collected and stocked away. Okay, it's getting dark outside and I'm losing my lighting, so let's wrap this up. Um, it's kind of hard to believe that there are 10,000 people who have been interested enough in my channel to subscribe to it. That is too big of a number for my brain to comprehend. It's incredible. Thank you all. Um, 
your likes, your comments, everything means a lot to me. Um, really motivates me to keep going and get even better at music so I can bring you guys better music and stuff. And a big thanks, of course, to the people who are donating to me on Patreon. Um, because of the money that you guys have been uh, donating, I was actually able to get Bixby. When I saw him in the shop, I realized I actually have money for banjo-related things, and I can buy this amazing one-of-a-kind banjo. So thank you for that. Your support means so much. Um, when my channel started getting more views, I kind of said to myself, okay, it's getting more views, so there's probably going to be some mean people out there who might start getting some hate. You guys are all so nice. I don't think I've had any mean comments. And I know as I get, as the channel grows, there probably will be one or two mean comments eventually, but this is like the nicest, most supportive community ever. So thank you guys. You are awesome. Cheers to 10,000 subscribers. Uh, we're a tenth of the way to 100,000 subscribers. I'm excited to see what the coming years will hold. Uh, who knows, maybe we'll get to meet Steve Martin one day. I don't know. It could happen. If I can hit 10,000 subscribers, I did not imagine that was possible, so who knows? But that's all for now. Thank you for being here, and I will see you for your next Daily Dose of Banjo. Goodbye. <laughs>